All right. Hello, and welcome again to another episode of Move with a Doc. I'm Dr. Rupa Shah, board certified family physician and obesity medicine specialist um, and health and wellness coach. And we're going to talk a little bit today about workplace ergonomics. So um, I say this every month, but uh, this topic, definitely make sure you're getting up, moving around, uh, taking a little break from your uh, from your sitting that you've probably been doing most of the morning so far. Um, so um, I am sure that most of you by now have heard uh, this kind of phrase that sitting is the new smoking. Um, this really refers to the fact that sedentary behaviors are just as dangerous as smoking and create a lot of um, health issues uh, very similar to smoking. So then just like any statement that is made in the press, right, this has been around for a little bit, sitting is a new smoking. So they, some, you know, someone did take it upon themselves to actually measure if this is a very true and accurate statement. It was an NIH study that was done looking at both. And they actually did find that there wasn't enough actual evidence yet to say sitting is just as bad as smoking. But I think what that phrase is trying to convey is actually very true. And the underlying sentiment has a lot of validity. Sitting is creating um, an increased amount of health issues that does lead to shortening of our lifespan. So the, you know, you've, I'm sure you've noticed yourself even personally that the amount of time that we spend sitting at our desk, in our car, watching TV, Netflix, you know, all of this has really increased over the decades. And this does create some significant health risks for us. So first, I just kind of want to start out by by talking about that, because um, when we say it out loud, you know, it really um, kind of hits home that sitting is not, you know, it's not beneficial for us as, as human beings. Um, sitting for long periods of time has been linked to heart disease, insulin resistance, and even increasing your chance of developing certain cancers. Um, disorders uh, involving skeletal muscle lipid metabolism um, are also on the rise. So this refers to things as uh, metabolic syndrome or syndrome X, whichever you want to call it, type 2 diabetes, obesity. All of these things are very interrelated and sitting seems to increase the incidence of these. Why? Well, what I was just looking at, because I always go down the rabbit hole, but this is a really interesting paper. And I actually learned something as I was doing this. Um, and the topic of this is suppression of skeletal muscle lipoprotein lipase activity during physical inactivity, a molecular reason to maintain daily low intensity activity. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty. I did read it. It was fascinating. But basically, Moving our muscles does aid us in the digestion of our fats and sugars. And particularly, this article was talking about um, impaired triglyceride, uh, those fats in your lipid panel, triglyceride metabolism. Um, when we sit, the process of digestion of our fats and lipids is um, disrupted. And that enzyme I was mentioning, the lipoprotein lipase, is one of the key um, enzymes that seems to be disrupted. So this leads to more fat deposition and more insulin resistance. So I actually did not know that there is this actual enzymatic metabolic uh, reaction that's that's actually occurring. Um, so muscle lipoprotein li lipase um, regulation is one of the most apparently sensitive metabolic responses to physical inactivity and uh, what they call low intensity contractile activity it means if you're not moving your muscles, that enzyme is very um, sensitive to that and um, will kind of shut down and not be doing its job. So very fascinating. And what they mentioned in the article is just even low level muscle contractility. So that means just getting up, moving, walking can actually then increase that enzyme again. So, and then therefore can protect you against poor lipid uh, metabolism. Um, other things that sitting can do, uh, long periods of sitting we know lead to uh, weaker muscles, especially in your legs, like your quadriceps, your gluteal muscles. Um, sitting can even cause your hip flexor muscles to shorten. I think we've all maybe noticed that a bit, uh, which can then lead to problems in your low back, your hip joints. Um, sitting can also lead to varicose veins. Uh, those little, uh, spider veins that some people get to, uh, more varicose veins. And it, 
I mean, to go one step further than that, it can even lead to deep venous thrombosis, um, which is a blood clot deep in the venous system. Um, and the problem with DVTs or deep venous thrombosis is that when a piece of that clot breaks off and kind of comes back upstream, it can go to your lungs, um, causing a blockage in the circulation in your lungs, which causes a lot of chest pain, shortness of breath, trouble breathing, um, and then part of your lung actually can die. So lots of issues with sitting for prolonged periods of time. Um, so clearly lots of downsides to sitting, but if your job involves sitting, um, as my job today does, um, what are some things that you should actually be thinking about in terms of uh, workplace ergonomics? Um, workplace ergonomics really just refers to how to optimize your um, workplace, uh, your chair, your computer, your mouse, all of those things to be the most efficient that they can be. Um, and things that you should pay close attention to. So let's go through a few of those. And maybe if you are still sitting, you can kind of do a little checklist and make notes of things that maybe you want to change later. Um, let's talk about the chair. And for full disclosure, I am currently sitting on a velvet uh not an office chair, but just a, a cute little chair. And I've got a cushion on it because I'm too short for it. So I have already made notes that I need to change that. Um, and also full disclosure, my husband is using our dining chair as his office chair. So we are terrible, but you should choose a chair that supports your low back, adjusting the height of the chair so that your feet are actually resting kind of flat on the floor comfortably. If not, you can use a little block to raise up your feet um, so that your thighs really are just parallel to the floor. Um, if your chair has armrests, make sure that you position them so that your elbows are just resting gently at your side. Your shoulders are relaxed, not hunched up all day. Um, make sure you're using good posture while you're sitting. Most of us, me included, we slump forward. We don't have a good posture with our shoulders back. Um, and it's, it's just very easy to do. And then the entire day you've sat in a posture that's not serving you well. Um, as far as your desk. Make sure that under your desk you have enough room for your legs, your feet. Don't store items under your desk. I've got a little fluffy ottoman under my desk that I plan to move out shortly. Um, if your desk is too high um, and it really can't be changed, then make sure you can raise your chair up potentially. Uh, we mentioned using a footrest to prop up your feet if necessary. Um, if your desk um, has a, a like a really hard edge, like mine does have, it's a wood desk and it is hard. You could you should think about padding the edge of it, um, or use a wrist rest so that you're not kind of getting um, sharp kind of edges uh, on your on your forearms uh, during the day. Um, this can also protect your wrist from contact stress, uh, and that can happen too. Is just you're constantly hitting the edges of your wrists on hard surfaces like that. Um, another issue that I've seen, and again, guilty of this all day long, is leaning on your desk with your elbows. I'll see a lot of folks get um, a little fluid collection. We call that an olecranon bursitis. It's from repetitive, hard um, contact uh, with your elbow. Um, and then it's uh, another issue that we can, we can see very often. So it does go away on its own, but you can get a really big uh, fluid accumulation there. In terms of your keyboard and mouse, really important, make sure that your computer keyboard is in front of you so that your wrists and forearms are in line. And again, shoulders relax. The more they're hunched up, the more tension we get on the back of our neck. Um, if you have a mouse, just make sure it's really within easy reach um, on the same surface as your keyboard. And then while you're typing, it's really important to maintain kind of a neutral posture of your wrist so that they're not cocked up too much. And that's how we develop those tendonitis in, in our wrists. Keep your arms um, pretty well kind of close to your body. So not that you're reaching too far out. Um, and if possible, set the sensitivity on your mouse to kind of um, one that you can just use a really light touch. So you're not having to use a lot of force throughout the day. Another trick that you could do if you're really inclined, I'm right hand dominant, but you could even try mousing occasionally with your non-dominant hand just to get a little bit of motion into your other wrist. And um, actually they say it's a good kind of brain teaser for you too, to kind of just try and use a different part of your brain because you're so used to using your, your dominant hand, but it's a good way to, to rest your dominant wrist as well. 
Your monitor um, should be, of course, straight in front of you, um, directly behind your keyboard, at least about kind of like an arm's length away. So I'm doing pretty good with that. Um, the monitor should be no closer than um, 20 in inches and then no further than 40 inches from you. And the top of the screen should be just kind of comfortable at eye level. And I think mine is pretty good um, so that at least you're not straining your neck too far having to look down kind of all day long. If you wear bifocals, make sure you lower it just a hair, um, maybe an additional one to two inches for the most comfortable viewing as well. Laptops, uh, using a laptop tends to lead to more discomfort because of that lower screen height. Um, so if you use a laptop at your desk, consider getting just an external keyboard and mouse um, and then getting one of those laptop stands. You can easily get those on Amazon just to raise it up to the, the proper um, eye level height for you. Um, you can even just use some big textbooks and stuff, which is kind of what, what I'll do sometimes um, to avoid that. Again, it's just to avoid all that neck strain. Um, objects that you use a lot, uh, like your phone. Um, you can just keep it. Um, I kind of keep mine on this little like stand right next to my desk so I can see it really easily. Um, it's probably a little lower than it needs to be, um, but at least so I'm not having to reach too much for it or strain, twisting, those types of things. And then telephone. Um, if you do use still a phone and you're trying not to cradle it, right? I think now with the advent of a lot of these earbuds, headsets, people are pretty good at using those um, so that we're not kind of straining our neck. Um, you can also use the speaker on your phone as well. So um, so let's kind of move on. So we know, uh, we talked about like some of the adverse health effects. We talked about some workplace ergonomics, things that you can do. We know that sitting for long periods of time does create poor posture. Um, I've really noticed this uh, with, you know, working from home more than I ever used to do, doing more telehealth visits as well. Um, you know, remember our head weighs about 10 pounds, right? So even if you tilt your head forward, um, your neck muscles have to engage to kind of prop you up and keep your head from falling forward uh, furthermore. You do this for hours a day, weeks on end, you are putting a strain on the back of your neck muscles and your upper back and your shoulders. Um, and that's going to reduce flexibility and movement. Then, of course, what do we do at the end of our day? We're on our phone um, because we have to see kind of what happens on social media. So, again, we're we're looking down again and we're just constantly in that forward flexed um, motion, um, scrolling all day long. And we spend a lot of our, our time hunched forward, shoulders rolled forward, neck forward. Um, and this is putting a lot of strain um, on our upper back. Um, so what are some things that we should do if you have a sitting job? you really should consider standing up, switching positions every 20 or 30 minutes. Um, if you can, even just taking a five minute walk um, around your house, around the office, uh, just to get the kind of blood flowing and, and your body moving a little bit. If you have a sitting desk, many of you may have already done this, but consider getting a sit to stand desk, okay? The goal, again, minimize the sitting, especially continuous sitting is what is felt to be really um, the most problematic for folks. Um, and then just try and incorporate that movement. Now, don't, if you get a standing desk, don't go from, you know, people do the sitting to standing all day right away, because that can lead to some other foot problems, knee problems, hip problems. Um, so kind of recommend starting slow, start with like a 50-50 ratio, 50% of the time sitting, 50% of the time standing, and then try and switch positions every 20 to 30 minutes still. And then when you find you can stand for longer periods of time, you're not having heel pain, foot pain, knee pain, then start switching that ratio to like a 60-40 one week, 70-30, you, you kind of get the idea. Um, just find kind of your own workable ratio. But remember, the the more that you frequently alternate be between sitting and standing is best for you. So what that means is it's better to alternate your positions every 20 minutes than sitting for like, let's say four hours and then standing for four hours, if that makes sense. That Those are both 50-50 ratios, but it's better to sit for a bit and then stand for 20 minutes, sit for a bit, stand again. That is a better alternating ratio than saying, oh, I'm going to sit for the first half of the day and then stand for the second half of the day. Okay. Um, other things that we can all do just to kind of improve our days, 
drink more water. Of course, that's good for us to hydrate, but drinking more water will make you want to use the bathroom. So then you can run, um, you know, upstairs to your bathroom and run back down just to get some extra steps into your day. Um, if you have a, a question for a colleague, instead of sending an email, just get up and walk, right? Um, have walking meetings. Uh, that's always a good idea. So people don't have to sit all the time. Um, and then you can even set an alarm on your phone just to remind you every 20 to 30 minutes, just, just take a quick little walk around, um, get up or do some stretches during your day. So a um, lot of good tricks for, for ways to get movement into your day. Personally, things that I do and have started doing because I've noticed actually I've always had a bad back and it's gotten a lot worse since I've been sitting. Um, so I've tried to incorporate some really quick and short yoga uh, movements into my day. Um, lucky enough, I'm working from home today. So I'll, I, I sometimes put the yoga mat. I don't even bother sometimes, but every hour I've told myself to do some, I'll lay down on the ground and do some gentle, sorry, gentle supine stretches. So basically laying on your back and then swinging, um, like your right leg kind of over to the left and then over, you know, your left leg over to the right, just to kind of get some gentle lumbar twists in. Um, I really like the half pigeon. I feel like I really, that helps with my hip flexor. So I'll do a little bit of that while still checking emails. Um, and then if I have more time, just a few three to four sun salutations, because that is just a really good overall way to get some real flexibility into the entire spine and even engage your um, upper arms and legs. Um, if I can, I'll do some quick chaturanga push-ups again, just to engage this part and kind of stretch out a little bit. Um, at the end of the day, and then the days I'm not working, I'll really try and do a lot of hip flexor stretching because I've noticed the hip flexors from when we sit get really tight. Um, so low lunges to stretch those out um, and some um, uh, hamstring stretches because you'll notice that those get really tight as well. Another idea that I'm just going to throw out there and I brought mine up is... Um, I did this last year. Um, I don't know. I'm sure many of you have heard of the TRX strap system. Um, so I have one of these and this door right behind me. I will open up and you just throw this little cushion over it. Close the door. Super easy. There's hundreds of exercises on YouTube. Really simple workouts and things that you can do with these. But what I love these for um, is that you can just take the straps and open up your chest like for five just like a few minutes you can take the straps and just do some real nice range of motion for your shoulders take a gentle step forward with the straps kind of behind you and open up all these um muscles on the interior chest because we just spent the whole day hunched over a keyboard and what happens is the anterior pec muscles get really tight and you lose a lot of range of motion um in your shoulders you can also use these straps if you um probably good to see things on YouTube to do um, some front lunges, again, to help with those hip flexors um, and work on your quad strengthening. Um, and I'll do just kind of um, some other kind of simple exercises. You can use them to do push-ups and things, but these are a lifesaver because they're inexpensive. You can throw them over the door, but they're not fixed. So you can just take them down when you're not using them um, and they don't take up any room. So just something I wanted to throw out there. So when I don't have any time in my day or I'm just having a really crazy day, um, what I do is I just run up and down the steps in my house two to three times just um, to do something. So sometimes simple is good too. You don't need fancy TRX or yoga mats or, or anything like that. So um, that's kind of what I have today. So I hope you learned a little bit today just about proper workplace ergonomics. Maybe you took some notes of things that you've already noticed in your workplace that you want to change, but also just thought about some of the physiologic changes that do occur when we sit for too long, um, including kind of what we talked about, lipoprotein lipase um, and that enzyme being really important for lipid metabolism. So again, it doesn't take a lot of movement. We're not talking about vigorous exercise. We're talking about having intermittent muscle contraction. So that means getting up and just walking around during your day can help activate that enzyme um, and 
you know, really help prevent that insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, and uh, extra fat deposition. So um, good luck, and hopefully you guys have a good rest of your day.